Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session, and thank you for taking your time to join us today. In this presentation, we're going to be talking about how to improve the performance of SaaS application over Cisco Meraki SDN. We will be using a Python script and Meraki API in order to achieve that. But first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Andre, and I'm a network support engineer here at Cisco Meraki. I'm based out of beautiful city of Sydney, Australia. I have over 10 years of experience in the system integration and telecommunication industries, where I have designed and implemented a number of corporate UC and network solutions. I joined Meraki one and a half years ago, and ever since I have been enjoying working with Meraki API and automation. The most exciting part of my job is to witness how the power of software is driving the changes in the world of network connectivity. To begin with, I just would like to say a couple of words about Meraki in general. Cisco Meraki is enterprise level networking infrastructure comprised of security appliances, wireless access points, switches, smart cameras, and other devices. It's fully cloud managed platform which is controlled by a single pane of glass called the Meraki dashboard. The dashboard not only allows to deploy, configure, and manage the devices at scale, it also provides the customers with rich analytics, monitoring tools, and insights about their infrastructure. On top of that, the dashboard provides all customers with RESTful API, which can be used in unimaginable number of ways. For example, you can get the current status of your devices and your current configuration. Also, you can deploy and make changes to your infrastructure. And finally, you can integrate Meraki ecosystem with your business application. If I had to choose one tool that I like the most about Cisco developers website, it would be interactive documentation. Apart from comprehensive information about all API calls, it enables you to make API calls from the web browser to the DevNet sandbox infrastructure and see the output in real time. Well, it's, it is especially handy when you look for a specific API call. Moreover, it gives code snippets for different program languages. Let's move closer to our main topic today. SaaS application usage have been growing tremendously over the past decade, and most of the companies nowadays are using cloud-based applications due to their accessibility and flexibility. This trend only accelerated in the current pandemic situation when many people started working from home full time. Performance of those applications is becoming business critical. Therefore, it puts additional requirements to the network infrastructure, which now must adapt to constant changes on the global internet. And today I would like to talk about a common problem with SaaS applications that some of our customers are facing and how automation with Python can solve this problem. In this scenario, the company is heavily using Microsoft Office 365, and our task today is to ensure the highest connectivity standards to this application. So let's take a look uh, at the classic hub and spoke VPN topology. We've got a pair of MX security appliances in the DC as a hub. And the data center has a low latency and high quality connectivity to SaaS application. All of the branches are spokes with two ISP connections for redundancy and Meraki auto VPN tunnels to the DC. So let's zoom in into the branch. In a standard setup, the traffic to the corporate resources would be tunneled towards the hub and the internet traffic, including the traffic to Office 365, would exit locally via ISP links. Well, the biggest problem with this setup would be the fact that we do not have any control over ISP, hence no control over the path that the traffic takes. Of course, we could set a full tunnel to the DC, and this would throttle the bandwidth in the data center, which we don't want. Let's see how we can go about solving this problem. Ideally, uh, we want to tunnel only the traffic towards our SaaS application, which is Office 365 via auto VPN. And the reason why we want to do that is because we want to take a full advantage of Meraki SD-WAN. 
This would give us an opportunity to set performance-based policies and adapt to changes in latency and packet loss, and choose the best performing link at a time. Also, in, in a traditional WAN failover scenario, when the traffic switches from the primary link to the secondary, the session would be simply cut off, whereas SD-WAN allows to maintain the session in the event of failover. It means no interruptions for the end users. This task comes down to the following. Since the hub has a high quality connection to Office 365, it just needs to advertise all of the Office 365 routes from the hub to the spokes. And the good news, we can automate this task. Automation will benefit us in a number of ways because it will eliminate manual and laborious tasks. We will avoid errors in configuration and we will keep our routes up to date over time. So how exactly does the script work? As a first step, the script goes to the Microsoft online documentation. It downloads the content of the page, parses it in order to derive the list of routes to Office 365. As a second step, the script gets the data about Office 365 subnets currently configured on the MX. And now we have two lists. One is from the Microsoft documentation, and another one is from the device itself. And as a third step, the script compares both lists and adds missing routes and removes the outdated ones. And this is all we need to do. I would recommend running this script periodically, let's say daily, by creating a routine task on the server. And let's take a look at the script in action. What we have in our environment is a VPN hub in the data center. And as you can see, um, there is only one private subnet being advertised across also VPN. Also, if we jump on the static routes, we will see that nothing is configured at the moment. And uh, yeah, this section is empty. Also, we've got a, a VPN spoke with two uplinks for redundancy, which is going to be our branch. And I just would like to uh, show how the Microsoft Online documentation look like. In essence, um, the data here is presented in the JSON file. So all we need to derive from this document is the list of uh, IP routes. And let's run the script for the first time and see it in action. As you can see, uh, there are no static routes uh, configured over here uh, on the hub, which means that everything that was found uh, in this document is going to be propagated and configured on the MX. And if we refresh that, the task is still ongoing, but we will see that the, the routes are slowly appearing on the dashboard. The script, as a last step, the script uh, advertises all those routes in AutoVPN and the task is completed. In order to verify that, uh, let's go to the routing table of the spoke. And yeah, we see that all of the routes have been propagated from the hub to the spokes. What is important to mention here is that uh, the script is using uh, a name convention that starts with Office 365 or 365 followed by the route itself. Uh, it helps us to eliminate the confusion and to distinguish Office 365 routes with the rest of the routes. Let's do something a bit more interesting. Uh, let's remove three routes from the hub. In this case, our configuration becomes outdated. And also, let's add one more route that is not supposed to be here. Uh, like I mentioned, there is a special naming convention that we should follow in this case. And this route is just a random route that is not supposed to be here. It's not in the online Microsoft documentation. And let's set the next hop to 192.168.128.254 and advertise it in a VPN. And let's save the config. So now we have three routes that are missing and one route that is not supposed to be here. Uh, let's run the script over again and see the output. So the script identified that one route needs to be removed and three routes are missing. 
and the script did the job. Uh, it eliminated all discrepancy in the configuration and it is up to date now. Uh, in a subsequent run, if we don't do anything and just, just run it over again, uh, it will determine that there are no discrepancy and there are no routes to remove or to inject. So yeah, we advertised all the routes across the VPN and um, now we can go ahead and configure policy-based routing. This is what we wanted to do in the first place because the traffic is being forwarded across the Meraki SD-WAN and now we just need to define the policy, how exactly it's going to be forwarded and which link is it going to take. As you can see, I've configured one uplink selection policy, uh, which essentially will switch over from WAN1 to WAN2 on the poor performance. And there is a performance class configured, it's custom. So when latency or packet loss exceed the threshold configured, the traffic will switch over and the users will feel and will experience no interruptions. So yeah, that's the script in action. If you want to take a look at the source code, please use this link to find it on the code exchange. And lastly, I would like to share my personal journey towards automation and programmability. In 2018, I took a Python Fundamentals online course and I wrote my first line of code. In 2019, I joined Meraki, got interested in APIs, and I made my first API call for the dashboard. And this year, I have developed several scripts which are solving real-world customers' problems. I just would like to emphasize that even without prior programming knowledge, you can ramp up pretty quickly. And here's my advice on what your path towards automation might be. I'd recommend starting with fundamentals. Learn and understand the basics of Python, as well as very common concepts such as data structures, modules, functions, and classes. Practice by using test API calls, learn how to get the data from the dashboard, parse it, and derive the information that you need. Look for an interesting problem to solve, which inspires you to learn and enhance your programmability skills. And share your code with others. Get their feedback and review other people's code. DevNet provides abundance of learning materials, sandboxing, sample codes. But more importantly, it's a great community of people who share the same passion and will help you in this transformational journey towards automation. I'd like to thank you for joining this session and enjoy the rest of the event.